Okay, YouTube, we're going to see if we can bring it all together uh, for those folks that have been thinking about solar power and thinking that they couldn't do it on, the, on their own. Uh, I'm here to tell you that you can. Um, I just finished uh, pretty much uh, the, the project of what I consider the project. Here, as in my other video, I'm just going to just tie things together. I, I put the pole, the uh, top of pole mounted uh, solar panels. Uh, those are two 200 watts uh, sun panels. Um, on a, an aluminum uh, pole uh, in, uh, encased in concrete. To finish off the project, I added some uh, hazard stickers on both sides so that the unwary person want, that wanting to come up and touch or something like that, you know, will at least be warned that it is a electrical shock hazard. I also added the ground wire, okay, uh, this basically this uh, green wire here, and both uh, panels are grounded, okay, and I added another trench, and the uh, ground the ground wire runs over here to this ground spike, okay, this ground spike, hopefully you can see it there, it's about eight feet in the ground, okay, so the pole is grounded, and this is my top of pole unit, uh, top of pole uh, solar array, okay, let's move on in, okay, moving on in uh, to my garage, to the next step. This right here is my transfer switch that's tied into my main panel. My goal was to bring my office off grid. Or, and right now, this is indicates that my office is off the grid, just by flipping this one switch. Uh, I have a placard up here with all of the uh, rooms and you know uh, that are that I can pull off the grid at any point in time. Um, and I, as it stands right now, I can pull anywhere uh, 50 to 60 percent of the house off the grid, you know, with not a problem. The main, we're talking the main rooms of the house. So this is my transfer switch. And also this satisfies two purposes really, or a couple of purposes. One, it, it allows me to take uh, any uh, six primary circuits off the grid. And uh, also it provides a circuit breaker function too. Um, so this provides the overcurrent protection on the AC side of, the, of my inverter. Moving on, safety is a big issue, okay? So what I did was I actually installed a fire extinguisher, okay, uh, that's rated, uh, you know, for electrical and so forth. Uh, this is a fire extinguisher on the outside of the utility room that houses, you know, the batteries and all the electrical components. So if you don't have a fire extinguisher uh, mounted nearby, I would suggest that you get one just for safety's sake. Moving to the utility room, as you can see, I have a sign, a danger electrical hazard sign uh, that basically says, hey, there's some electrical stuff in here that could hurt you to the, to the uh, uh, average person. Uh, you can see that and say, okay, just be careful if you're going to walk past these doors, okay? Why, again, for safety's sake, and if somebody, if there were some fire uh, fighters having, uh, having to respond. Okay, as now... My system has changed uh, quite a bit since uh, I first started this particular ordeal. Um, just to kind of show you, um, I, again, I have my disconnect switches here, okay? Now, this is a disconnect switch that will disconnect this controller from the panels and the battery. This is another disconnect switch that will, that will uh, disconnect this controller, controller number two, from the panels and the battery. As you see the green wires, they are, the green wires indicate that my that, that part of the system is equipment grounded. I've also changed the, my previous switch to this particular battery or bank, battery bank selector switch. It also serves as my disconnect switch. Uh, on selector number one, it connects to my inverter, and selector number two, it connects to a grid tie inverter. Okay, a grid tie inverter. Yes, I did connect my system to my grid tie inverter to the batteries as opposed to my panels. Why? Because it, it met my requirements, and I'll, I'll try to talk about that in a few. Um, also, <clears throat> I added in a switch that will turn my exhaust fan on and off. Again, it, it basically gives me more flexibility. Now, after reading through the uh, uh, various uh, books and publications dealing with like the, the uh, National Electrical Code, because my, this particular charge controller is connected to panels that will be drawing uh, power from those panels, 
um, at over 50 volts open circuit, then I had to ground the negative conductor. And that is indicated by this white wire on the negative conductor going to earth ground. So that, would, that satisfies that requirement. I also added another power strip, you know, surge protector power strip that is not GFI, okay, because my inverter wouldn't like that, but this is just a, you know, a typical uh, power strip or surge protector that, that gives me a little more flexibility for, you know, whatever reason, okay. Also, um, there are, you know, I've added some fans because even though I've got an exhaust fan, it can really get hot. These components can get pretty hot. So I had some old computer fans and I just decided to add them in. They're 12 volt. My system is a 24 volt system. These are 12 volt fans. You may ask, well, how are you running it? Well, I'll show you in a second. Okay, here's another fan. Okay, it is a 12 volt fan also. Just a simple computer fan that I had laying around and I just decided to repurpose them. It cools down, th this fan cools down this controller. This fan cools down this controller. That fan <laughs> cools down my grid tie inverter. And this fan, which was only five bucks from Walmart, cools down the, this inverter here. Okay, uh, the exhaust fan working with those, you know, it should, should provide my components uh, some very some pretty good uh, temperature protection. Okay, now how do I get these things to power up? Well, I had a problem. Twelve volt fan, twenty four volt output from the controller. So what do I do? I go to Walmart and I grab a, a, a simple uh, adapter plug and I get a uh, simple transformer or, or you know a little uh, it'll step a step down transformer here basically in this little this this thing here you get them both from Walmart okay I can I don't know if you can see that but that's 12 volts okay the maximum of 12 volts minimum of 3 volts okay I even got a a USB uh, connector there too. So what do I do? I basically I bought both of these and then I went to Home Depot okay and I bought this little box here okay and it's labeled 12 volt terminal connectors and I got it taped on just so I can show you and I'm gonna I'm gonna screw it in later and I just put simple you know bus bars positive and negative and guess what happens it steps this 24 volts down through this transformer to 12 volts and I just basically simply tied in the wires to the appropriate posts on our terminal blocks okay and now I have my 12 volts running my fans so it's something really 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 simple something really simple um, I also added two more batteries okay you notice that those batteries are not Optimus they're actually worker batteries but you see and I know people say well they should be the same brand and so forth blah 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 but uh, I kind of disagree with that because as long as they have the same electrical characteristics, uh, characteristics you know, the same power ca characteristics, I think they will work. Uh, that battery, the worker battery, is a 55 amp hour AGM 12 volt battery, okay, deep cycle. And the, the key reason I bought those two uh, to add in as opposed to another Optima is because they were two-thirds the price and I just couldn't resist. They have the same uh, power characteristics, the same, they are a, both AGMs, and they have the same capacity rating. So uh, basically, you know, I'm willing to take that risk. Um, also, I've updated my drawing, um, you know, I'll provide a link if somebody wants to see it and so forth to get a, uh, you know, some way to, you know, look at it on their own. Uh, so I'll, I'll just post it. Uh, anyway, I have a 500 watt grid tie inverter that I bought, you know, just on a whim to see what it would do. Um, hooked up to my batteries, this thing will actually put about 470 watts into the house, <laughs> back into the house. Um, yes, I know people say, well, you should hook it directly to the panels and this, that, and the other thing, but I can't hook it to my, uh, my uh, solar array on the top of pole mount because they, it, puts in, it pumps out too much voltage. Um, and these panels over here, eh, I decided not just not to do it because my guess it will probably give me about maybe 250 to uh, maybe 200 watts. So I decided to go the more efficient route. So essentially, I'm getting at any at any given time in a on a good day about 670 watts coming back into my system. I decided to uh, connect it to the battery 
and then use this uh, battery, ba battery bank selector switch to choose between the two or go to both. And I tested it out and it works, it works fine. Uh, it plugs into this little wall receptacle here. What you see on this receptacle is basically a, uh, a timer, a simple timer. I'm gonna, I can have it set to, well, let this thing come on at 8 a.m. in the morning, let it go off at about uh, 2, uh, 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Or I could just simply come and just click the button. Click the button and it turns on my inverter, my grid tie inverter, and as you can see, that light is just going to town. Um, it works great. Um, looking here how much power is being pulled out at the time, well, it's really late in the day, so you'll, it's right now pulling about 21 amps out of the battery bank. Uh, it's almost around, al almost around 3.30, close to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, but between the hours of 8 and 2 o'clock in the afternoon, or, or 2 o'clock, you will not see 21 amps coming out of this battery bank. At most, you'll probably be 7 or 8. Um, and in some cases, you won't, you won't see anything. It'll be, it'll be, it'll zero out and it'll just kind of even out. So it works, it works pretty well. I, you know, I know some people again, uh, and I respect everyone's opinion and so forth, but I kind of choose to hook it directly to my batteries. Um, and you know, I, I've got good, good efficiency and good, and good performance with that. But anyway, YouTube, that's my new system. I'm not saying that this is the right way to do it. And I'm not saying this is the only way to do it. Uh, there are definitely better ways, but yeah, this is my way of doing it. And it works out pretty good. Take care, YouTube.